Yes, uh, my name is uh, William Fain. You can call me Bill, Bill Fain. And uh, I'm an architect. And I have a firm with my partner, Scott Johnson. And the firm's name is Johnson Fain Architects. And uh, we do quite a variety of projects uh, in various locations, particularly in the United States, but also overseas as well. Well, I was raised in California and I went through public schools. I graduated from public high school here in Los Angeles. And uh, I went to UC Berkeley uh, in the architectural program, which, was, which at that time was a five-year program in order to get a bachelor's degree. And then I went to the University of Manchester, England, uh, because of my interest in social planning and uh, Newtown development. Following that, I went to Harvard's Graduate School of Design uh, with an emphasis on urban design and planning. I am an architect and have done buildings before, but I was particularly interested in very large scale city additions, uh, redevelopment issues, uh, neighborhood rehab, and all the, the things that make uh, cities over time. Uh, in the more recent years, in the last 20 years or more, I uh, really focused on urban design and planning. I might say in my business here, I am the, uh, the managing partner and also the director of urban design and planning. Projects we've done, particularly the Mission Bay project in San Francisco, which was the largest addition to the city of San Francisco in its history. And it was done in the late 1990s into the 2000s. And it is the home of the University of California at San Francisco Biotech Campus. In the last 15 to 20 years has developed into over 2 million square feet of educational facilities, uh, dormitories for students and research laboratories. And is among the most advanced biotech campus in the world. The story of the project is the story of the Native uh, people. The reason why it's the story of the Native people here in America, in the U.S. particularly, is in 1830, there was an act passed in Congress called the Indian Removal Act. And uh, in that act, they provided the, the legal right to the U.S. government to take the, many of the tribal lands and to relocate the people to what they called in those days Indian Territory. And Indian Territory was the state of Oklahoma. So the story of the Oklahoma Indian, which is what the subject of this particular mu museum is, that is the first Americans museum, is the story of indigenous tribes in the United States. And it's not all of them because they say there's somewhere around 500 nations. Uh, and this involved something between 39 and uh, as many as some say, as many as 110 tribes who were marched from their native lands to Oklahoma. They were required to to cover 10 miles a day. It was a terrible program. Uh, it's often referred to as the Trail of Tears and many uh, Native peoples perished uh, during the trip. As far away as the Madocs in Sonoma County, uh, tribal areas there that they brought them to Oklahoma. The most famous is the the Trail of Tears movie uh, is based upon the forced march of the Seminoles from Florida to Oklahoma. And there's many others from New England and Michigan and around that area as well. So the museum really speaks to that. It speaks to the that history. It speaks to also the reconciliation of that history and the incorporation of uh, Native peoples as they learn to live together with others in Oklahoma. So they talk in a very positive way about issues having to do with survival, uh, resilience, and that sort of thing relative to the condition of the peoples today. So it's not just past, but it's also a future outlook towards uh, the future indigenous people. It's a museum and cultural center. That was the intent of it at the outset. The difference being is that a cultural center is used by the native people as a resource for their lives. And uh, it's about the present and also the future. It's not just the uh, difficulties of the past. Well, the first thing is you have to be a good listener. Yeah. And so it took 25 years from the very beginning until 
uh, the opening of the door to the facility. A project like this could take maybe at the most 10 years, but most probably about five years. But this took 10 years to develop this, this project. Uh, we felt that from a design perspective, we needed the time. And the reason why we needed the time is that we needed to listen to the tribal elders. Uh, we needed to walk the site with them. We needed engagement with them. And we had a number of Native people advisors who were 100% Native people and they changed our way of thinking and referencing became really important and acknowledging uh, some values that our Western society does not necessarily engage in today, for instance. For example, land is important to all of us. Of course, we're a nation, we have the United States, and the Western tradition, of course, is, is to buy and sell land, you know, whether it's a farm or a house, someone owns the property. Native people don't think that way. Uh, land is earth to them, and earth is spiritual. The other thing about the site, which is so important, is that it embodies the three ecologies. So if you take the Indian tribes that were uh, relocated, uh, the three indigenous tribes, and then uh, this particular area of Oklahoma, there are three ecologies that these tribes came from. They're the woodlands, they're represented in the site. They're very characteristic of the woodlands in Oklahoma. There are, there are stands of trees that are thick. You can go into them. It's really quite wonderful. And then there is the plains, the very open flat area of uh, plains. And you go out, particularly west uh, Oklahoma, uh, you'll see the plains are very open. The horizon is way out there and you can see all the way around. There's no mountains, it's just all flat. And the plains are important as, as characteristic locations for indigenous people. Uh, and then the river ecology, which is building on the river. Now, why that's important from the outset, um, when we began the project, we realized uh, we went through the site selection of a number of sites, got down to two sites, one in Edmond and the other one in Oklahoma City. And the one that we walked the site with the elders and they spoke very positively about the Oklahoma site because it embodied these three ecologies and the river was very much a part of that. But the problem with the river is in the floodplain, you know, and so how, how do you build in a floodplain if you're a native people? Well, you build mounds, that's what you do, is you get everything above the floods. So that ultimately when they do happen, you're in safe territory. So the first act was to locate the site within the site and then to build a large disc, a 20 foot high disc, then position the building ultimately above the floodplain, and then to build a spiral mound. We call it the Walk of Life, and the spiral mound commemorating the Garden of Origins, which were uh, the idea of, that man comes from the earth and ascends to the heavens. And there's two circles. One is this circular earthen mound, which commemorates the history of the indigenous people, really, of nature and then the imposition of the Western world, which is more technology, and that's the building. These two circles overlap, they form a kind of ellipse, and then that is projected through the heavens. The overlapping of those two histories, that is one circle commemorating the indigenous people and uh, the original people, the first Americans. And then the second are the people that occupied the land that came as foreigners to this land and they overlap, and that overlap that it forms is the hall of the people. Listening to many of our Indian advisors, of course, is that uh, they saw that as a location of all people, not just Native Indigenous people, but it's also the reconciliation of the two histories, that is the Native histories and those that settled here from other places. And there's lots of different symbolic references in the building. Uh, the roofs are designed like the wings of a hovering eagle uh, with the wind. In many ways, it's commemorated by the Native American dance. And this is a very important concept for the roof. And you can see the roofs are designed, uh, in essence, the, looks like an airplane. It has the edge of a wing and they, they're bent and curved wings of a, of a bird hovering, you know, for instance. So it, it commemorates the dance of the Native people and the powwows that are uh, organized, particularly in Oklahoma. They have what's called the Red Earth Festival, which is a wonderful place to visit uh, and to experience uh, traditions. And that was taken into account as well in the design of the building.